You know, I've heard people say that it's gotten better. I didn't think it had gotten better because you've had more people who have descended upon this area, run out of Miramar by the Miramar military, ethnic cleansing, and so it seems more crowded as they try to expand these camps. And this is this is just the beginning, and I honestly don't know how these Rohingya are going to endure this day after day after day. Actually, it's, it's hour after hour after hour. There's another crisis, danger, and this is, you know, this is just unthinkable absolutely unthinkable that anyone could suffer like this. And a million people are all penned in their suffering. But what was even worse this time than when I was there six months ago is the monsoon season had set in. And you've got all these people, almost a million people who descended upon this area fleeing for their lives and they took down all the vegetation to build shelters and also to use as fuel to cook. So there's nothing, there, there are no trees or anything to hold the soil. And they came in and in desperation they built these shelters wherever they could first see them and they built them on hillsides. Well now comes the monsoon season. And the monsoon season, unless you've been in a monsoon, it's, I mean, you've seen, never seen anything like it. So now what's happening is these shelters are literally collapsing on the shelters beneath them. Then you've got the added problem that they are also, there were some latrines that were built um, on, on the hillside too. That likewise, those are now collapsing and they're draining and the filth, the filthy water and the feces in the water is flowing down into the water system. And you know that that's a fertile breeding ground for disease. That's how cholera is uh, transmitted is in filthy water. Everyone seems somewhat uh, jubilant by the fact that half the people in the camp, they've been able to vaccinate for cholera, but half is half a million people, and you've got another 480,000 people who haven't been. And as we got deeper into the into the camp, we were on a road that got washed away uh, while we were inside the camp by the monsoon. Let's take a look. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is what they're now going to drive across, right here. Take a look at this, and it uh, and it's straight down, what about 50 or 60 feet, straight down. While the roads are impassable and even dangerous, how do you get food in there? What if someone gets sick? And these people are living on top of each other. Well, the one thing that's the sort of redeeming quality about this is that, you know, just like we saw with the, with the boys in the cave in Thailand, there are a lot of really good people out there in the world and from all over the world. And to deal with the health crisis, you've got a lot of NGOs that have, that have come to um, Bangladesh to help out. So there's been an, an, an overpouring of help from the world, but you, Not a, you can't meet the magnitude of the challenge. That's the problem. So the good side is you see these incredible people working around the clock 24-7. By the other hand, is that you look around and you see that uh, there are almost a million people here and it's just not being handled completely. There's not enough of a world spotlight on this crisis. The one thing that would give me hope is if there were a greater commitment to use the giant spotlight of the world media on this crisis, because this is ethnic cleansing. And the world sort of collectively said, never again after the Holocaust, and said, never again after Rwanda. Well, it's happening again. The UN has called this ethnic cleansing. Uh, the United States has called this ethnic cleansing. So this is one of those instances where the world media, uh, it, it, can't, it can't cure cholera, it can't reverse what's happened, but it can use its power and its influence by putting its spotlight on this crisis, which is frankly something that we all want to do as journalists is, is put a spotlight on hoping to lead towards solutions, at least dialogue towards trying to find solutions.